Okay, we will now have a clinical case discussion led by Dr. Plusar, uh, focusing on the role of next generation imaging for the upfront staging of high risk prostate cancer after the recent release of the pro PSMA trial. So, Guillaume, over to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gianluca. So the clinical case of staging uh, of iris disease, we're going to speak about uh, 55 years old man. Uh, he doesn't have any uh, severe disease, just an hypercholesterolemia. He's a smoker, and we can see that he has a familial history of localized prostate cancer with his brother at the age of 68. He doesn't have any bothersome urinary symptoms. His IPSS is low, and he underwent a first PSA test uh, and the, the level is at 8.4, control at 8.6. Uh, during the digital rectal examination, the volume is at 20 grams, so the PSA density is high, 0 0.42. And uh, there is a clinical T2 disease on the left side. So accordingly to the EAU guidelines, you order an MRI prior to a biopsy, and this uh, MRI reports a bulky disease on the left side, concordant with the, the clinical staging, and a pyroid score at five. There is also a suspicion of extra prosthetic extension, including the base of the left uh, seminal vesicle, and there is also a left lymph node under the external iliac vessel, but the radiology said that this node is not specific because uh, very small, five millimeters. So you go for biopsy, systematic and targeted biopsy. And uh, when uh, we look at the results, there, there are four positive cores on the left side, two positive cores on the right side, and the three targeted cores are also positive with uh, Gleason 8, so is upgrade four, and the maximal uh, percent of involvement per core is very high at 90%. So uh, whatever the risk group classification you use, you can see that this patient has a very high risk uh, prostate cancer with a uh, high Gleason score. So now it's time for the staging of the disease. According to the EAU guidelines, you will order for cross-sectional abdominal pelvic imaging. You have the MRI, but this guy also uh, uh, had a CT scan and, of course, a both scan. Both exams were negative, according to the radiologist report, bone scan negative, and the CT scan uh, has confirmed the 5 millimeter left node, uh, which is equivocal uh, or negative, according to the radiologist reports. So this 55-year-old uh, uh, gentleman has uh, iris prostate cancer, clinically uh, T2 disease, T3B on MRI with the left uh, seminal vesicle involvement, M0 and CN0, so non-metastatic disease. So question one for the experts, for this guy, after the diagnosis and the staging, what are the best treatment options uh, for the management of this high risk disease? Um, so I was told to answer first. So um, obviously I'm a medical oncologist and in that sense, this is a localized disease and um, we would discuss these all these cases at our multidisciplinary tumor board. So, so for me, obviously there is a lot of discussion for high risk. It's a, he's a very young man so there is the one option to do radical radiotherapy that will be with ADT obviously or the other option is also um, surgery but I guess really we have to tell the patients that that will be probably just one part of a multi-modality treatment then. Um, the real added value of the surgery hasn't been um, shown by strong evidence um, but I think it's still uh, an option here. But I leave it to the, the urology, um, Gianluca. Yeah, I agree with Silke. We, at our center, we will uh, likewise discuss this case uh, uh, within our multidisciplinary tumor board. Of course, the two options are uh, here to stay. So uh, surgery, we'll extend it um, template uh, pelvic lymph node dissection and 
uh, eventually uh, some sort of uh, radiation therapy in the later course of disease or primary radiation uh, therapy uh, with ADT, uh, probably two to three years, uh, and um, even a, a boost on the on the lymph nodes. So we are not scared of this uh, minimal lymph node. Uh, it is a pre-local, it is small. So we will discuss with the patient uh, on the pros and cons uh, and uh, advantages and toxicity of the two treatments. Of course, the disease is aggressive, so we need an aggressive treatment and the patient has to be prepared to suffer from toxicity. Uh, probably at the end, we will, uh, based on the young age, probably, we will uh, move the needle to surgery, but uh, it's only one opinion. Can we maybe also ask, I mean, this is, is not for treatment, but I think for such a young patient with a brother who had also a prostate cancer, I think we would also then recommend genetic counseling, um, but that's obviously not part of the treatment, but I think would be important in, in this family. Yeah, I agree. I agree too, Silke, and uh, I, I think the two options, uh, radiotherapy plus long-term ADT and radical prostatectomy, are good for that patient. And the young age, I think, in my center, will uh, promote uh, maybe more towards uh, surgery uh, because we there, there's just just a small involvement of the base of the seminal vesicle. So with the surgery, I think you you you. you you can have a negative surgical margin surgery. So, of course, there is a risk of multimodal treatment and uh, salvage radiotherapy, early salvage. But uh, in that setting, maybe in my center, we will go for radical prostatectomy, given the, the young age of the patient. Yeah, and I think we all know that there is no randomized trial to, to show us what is really better. So I guess it's a discussion. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, the, at least in my experience, the patients know pretty well what they want if you discuss both options. Uh, yeah, you're right that uh, I, I think the advice of, of the physician and of the surgeon is, is very important, but it's very important to, to give an appointment with the, uh, with the rejection okay. oncologist. I think it's a real multidisciplinary decision and it's not just the surgeon uh, to decide, but the patient and an advice from the radiation oncologist. Yeah, probably this is the one of the best candidates that the radiation oncologist will have to have because uh, it is a small gland. Uh, he has no, literally no urinary symptoms. So I think the toxicity that uh, he will experience is probably uh, low apart from the toxicity given by the ADT. So this is really a, a case that uh, could be managed uh, with success by both options. Yeah, I agree. Yes. And I think what Guillaume has said is really important that the patient has the opportunity to really to discuss with, with both and, and get the aspects of, of both treatments with the pros and cons, especially with the side effects. And, and then I think it's, you can do like an informed decision with the patient. Yes, and maybe we're gonna have a, a clear uh, a clear choice in the next future thanks to the Scandinavian trial uh, comparing surgery and radiotherapy. But I think the results are not uh, not ready for for the next month. So we we're gonna move forward, and as you can imagine, we're gonna discuss about PSMA PET CT. Because this year, Hoffman and colleagues uh, published in the Lancet Journal uh, randomized control triangle assessing conventional imaging, bone scan, and first line CT versus PSMA PET CT in the staging of high risk disease. So, uh, in that in that trial, uh, 300 patients were randomized according to bone scan and CT versus PSMA PET CT uh, before local treatment. Uh, in this trial, second line imaging was also used uh, in case of uh, no metastatic or oligometastatic disease just to confirm the positivity of the lesion on the first line imaging. Biopsy was also recommending if lesion of on imaging 
and through the overall cohort, more than 100 patients on, underwent a radical prostatectomy, including 83 pelvic lymph node dissection. So th- we have the confirmation of the nodal disease or not in in that subgroup of patients. And what was really interesting is the follow-up uh, because all the patients with a positive lesion on the first line imaging uh, underwent to six months imaging just to follow distant lesion to be sure that there is a progression if metastatic or a regression is, or stabilization if, uh, if, um, if the lesion was uh, finally negative. Regarding the staging impact, as you can see, all the red box are on the right side. That means that PSMA PET CT was superior to conventional imaging in high risk prostate cancer staging uh, for detecting any metastatic disease. So for detecting pelvic nodal disease, but also distant metastasis. And the area on the curve was improved by uh, 27%. Uh, in the two analyses, uh, when you consider equivocal lesion as negative or as positive. And as you can see, when you use PSMA PET CT in that population, so for our patient uh, that is presented now, uh, you will find in 20% a nodal disease positivity on PET CT, and in 50 uh, percent of the cases, distant metastasis. So maybe you will uh, not go for local treatment in that uh, situation. More importantly, when you use PSMA PET CT, you will have an impact on the, the treatment you decided before uh, the staging. And when you use PSMA PET CT, you will increase the intended treatment change by twofold as compared to conventional imaging. You will go for more pelvic lymph node dissection, you will increase the radiotherapy dose, and you will increase the radiotherapy field. So there is clearly an impact significant on the treatment. Controversy, you can see that when you use PSMA PET CT, you will abandon local treatment in a not negligible proportion of patients when you use conventional imaging, patient will go for palliative treatment only in 8% of the cases. But when you uh, use PSMA PET CT, you will detect more metastasis. So you will uh, go for more palliative treatment in, uh, in, uh, in, in a subgroup of patient, and it's 13% in that uh, trial. So there is a clear impact of PMA PET CT as uh, a staging tool. And now this is clearly... the. One of the main questions in 2020 for an update of the recommendation, and I will ask the, the question to, um, to Silke. Would you recommend a PSMA PET CT now, given these results in that setting before treatment decision making? Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you, Guillaume. So, so I have first to say that uh, I'm working in Switzerland. In Switzerland, PSMA PET CT is approved for biochemical relapse, but not in this staging setting. Um, The other thing is we we just, uh, it's really timely because we just got a manuscript submitted that we wrote in response to this paper from Michael Hoffman. I think the really important thing is, I think we all believe that PSMA is more accurate and more sensitive than conventional imaging. Even maybe there is also some, some, other studies that have done more surgery to really verify the metastasis and there the sensitivity is a bit less than in in, uh, Michael Hoffman's trial. But anyway, we we all agree it's more accurate. But I think a treatment change doesn't automatically mean that you have a better outcome, clinical outcome in your patients. And for me, in the moment, is really what is missing is a trial that shows us that these changes in management really also then translate to a better clinical outcome. And I'm a bit, what, what you have said, Guillaume, I'm a bit worried that we're taking away a potential curative chance to patients because we now say, oh, they're metastatic. And I know this is happening in some countries. Um, so they, they just get palliative treatment and no more local treatment. 
And I think this is a bit the danger because we actually don't know, right? First of all, we don't know if we, we, we know that not, not all positive lesions are really metastasis. And then even if there are metastasis, maybe there is an episcopal effect, for example, with the radiotherapy. I mean, we have all our data generated with conventional imaging. Um, and so I think we have to be a bit careful um, to say that we really change the outcome of our patients with the novel imaging. That's clearly better, obviously. Yes, uh, I agree, Silke. Just to give you a sort of reassurance, the, this trial was uh, not published, but uh, started before the publication of the Stampel trial, showing that there is an impact of local radiotherapy on oligometastatic disease. So maybe some patients uh, going through palliative treatment in that trial uh, would have now local radiotherapy uh, in that setting. Uh, so, so maybe the, there is also... Uh, I agree with you, a risk of over-treatment, uh, sorry, under-treatement, under uh, if, under yeah, if you see metastasis disease. But I think if you just detect one or two spots on PSMA PET CT, you will go for local treatment now, given the results of Stampede. Yeah, we have to be careful. The stampede radiation dose was different uh, than what you would use for a radical treatment. Especially, it was only the, the prostate. It wasn't. It wasn't the lymph nodes. So, so I guess we have to be a bit careful there if that's really then equivalent. But, but obviously, you're right. But then maybe you you would give even some other systemic treatment, right? So this is this is the other question. But we, I think we come yeah. back to that. Uh, just to, to reinforce one concept, uh, to me, uh, the outcome uh, changing treatment is rather uh, dangerous mm -hmm. uh, because it's mainly subjective. So probably this ne next generation imaging without knowing the real impact on the hard uh, patient outcome, mm -hmm. it, it, it's really dangerous because uh, the way I can change the treatment is completely different than the way that Silke or you, William, can, can react. So this uh, probably generates uh, heterogeneity and uh, lowers the, the bar of the good clinical practice. So we really need uh, studies. So we congratulate the, the authors for the wonderful study, but we need really um, trials uh, focusing on the uh, survival or surrogates uh, before we change our uh, attitude towards uh, these cases. Second point is that, uh, uh, okay, specificity is good. The problem is with the sensitivity. We, we must not forget that these uh, data come from a tertiary center with a really expert um, nuclear medicine physicians. So uh, I wonder if these cases can be replicated anywhere in the world. And the problem is, again, that we don't have uh, uh, good studies uh, with uh, uh, histology, uh, histopathology as the standard of reference. So again, it's mm -hmm. dangerous to spread uh, the voice that uh, this uh, uh, next generation imaging should be uh, universal. And I guess I, I want also to, to add that there is different, because you've written um, PSMA PET CTs, right? But there are different tracers. And we have to be really careful because gallium is different from fluoride. And fluoride is, is used more and more, um, but that has more an affinity to the bones. So that's maybe even more difficult to read um, sometimes. So I guess we also need to have our learning curves um, from the nuclear medicine people, wherever you are, um, to interpret also the, the newer imaging that, that uses the fluoride as, as a, for the PSMA PET CT. Um, and I guess this is something that's coming uh, internationally. I don't know how it is in Italy, uh, Gianluca, or in France, but um, at least in Switzerland, it's used more and more, the, the fluoride. We started with the gallium, but now we, we're using much more fluoride. Yes, you're perfectly right. In France, we, we clearly are not, uh, we are late because we have only <laughs> gallium PSMA, and I think three or four centers only, and we can have PSMA PET CT only if we 
have a colli negative pet CT. Mm -hmm. So that's very difficult in that setting. And clearly, we only use PSMA PET in case of uh, biochemical recurrent disease. Mm -hmm. And that's the same in Italy. So very few centers uh, uh, with expertise in uh, PSMA PET uh, and uh, mostly perform still a uh, coline PET. So for the our guy, he finally had a PSMA PET CT in Belgium uh, because uh, it's difficult in France. Uh, and you can see that uh, the lymph node on the CT and uh, on the MRI was positive uh, on PSMA PET CT. So maybe this is a CN1 disease on new generation imaging. And uh, more surprisingly, there is also a single positive spot on the bone, on the fourth thoracic vertebra. It doesn't have any symptoms. There's no lytic uh, lesion on CT scan and uh, uh, no spinal cord signal on MRI. So no symptoms regarding this uh, single bone lesion. So the guy has a neurometastatic disease on new generation imaging. So we move from a localized disease on conventional imaging to through uh, oligometastatic disease. So I think the question is very important because it it will um, it will appear more and more in the future, and we don't we don't have high level of evidence to, to answer. So it really depends probably on tumor bone on discussions between the patients and the physicians. So the question for you, uh, does it change your primary tumor treatment options? If you choose radical prostatectomy, do you think now you can go for radical prostatectomy because it's a local treatment as radiotherapy? Or clearly, there is now a contraindication for surgery. And if you do a primary tumor treatment, you will choose a radiotherapy. Gianluca, maybe you can answer. Yeah, sure. This is quite a common scenario right now. So we have uh, repeatedly discussed uh, these cases within our uh, tumor board. And so our uh, proposal, our offer to the patient in these cases is that we don't change uh, uh, treatment. So if we go for radical prostatectomy, then we just go. Of course, we inform the patient that these are data that probably will mature. But uh, up to date, there is no level one evidence that uh, detecting uh, eventually, mm, small metastasis early in the disease uh, course uh, will lead to improved outcomes. Uh, second point is that we cannot have a histological uh, confirmation in many of these cases. So probably the nodes uh, are more easy to be biopsied, but the bone or visceral lesions uh, uh, not. So again, uh, we will uh, really um, be firm in our decision and just uh, inform the patient that uh, what we propose is the standard of care. Probably will change our opinion in the future, provided that the high-level evidence uh, is uh, will emerge. And Silke, what what is your opinion about uh, the primary tumor treatment in that setting? So the primary tumor treatment. Um, I think, you know, we would here rather go for radiotherapy anyway. So I guess this, this, tum this, this one lymph node will probably change a little bit where the boost is also the additional boost is for our radiotherapists. But I'm not a radiotherapist, so I can't tell you exactly what they would change. But I guess they would change a bit how they would treat the patient and, and like add a boost for, for that specific uh, region where there is um, that, that uptake in the PSMA PET. CT. And obviously, um, I'm waiting for stampede. You know, so the stampede on um, with the oligometastatic, um, like setting, will hopefully open up soon. But even there, you know, like the you can do a normal imaging, but you will be randomized by the conventional imaging. So that would be one uh, an M zero disease in the conventional imaging, obviously. And uh, another question for you, Gianluca. If you go for radical prostatectomy, do you prescribe new adjuvant ADT or adjuvant or just <laughs> adjuvant ADT in, uh, in function of uh, of the PSMA uh, results after the surgery? 
Yeah, we we try to be, I would say, as conservative as possible. So we would rather go for a, a, a surgery in the, the first, and then we see the the pathology. Probably here we have a, a, a TT3 disease. Uh, probably we don't have a, an N0. We don't know. Uh, but in in, in case uh, we have a, a limited nodal disease, uh, we refrain from giving ADT due to the toxicity and due to the um, contemporary retrospective data saying that uh, minimal nodal disease uh, is not an ominous uh, sign, so we can spare uh, ADT and uh, other treatment for uh, other metastasis. Okay, thank you, Gianluca. So the last question, more difficult, mm -hmm. the most difficult one. So you treat the, uh, the primary tumor, radical prostatectomy in Italy and radiotherapy in Switzerland. Uh, just to discuss, I think in France, it, uh, it's also radiotherapy because we don't go for radical prostatectomy in the metastatic setting. So the next question is, how do you treat the oligometastatic disease? Will you go for adjuvant ADT only? Do you add a, another systemic treatment like apalutamid and zalutamid, abiraterone, or do you go for metastasis direct therapy using SBRT on the on the thoracic vertebra? Gianluca. Yes. So this is really a, a hot topic and a mm. very debated uh, matter. And uh, so what we do in in our center is of course. Uh, reserve all this treatment uh, in a so-called experimental setting. So we, we just make sure that the patient uh, and, and the consent uh, is focused on this uh, scenario. Uh, we try to give um, SBRT to the metastatic deposits. Uh, we, are, we discuss case by case whether we should add ADT to SBRT Uh, probably at the beginning, we were reluctant to give uh, ADT uh, because uh, one of the uh, endpoints end uh, um, on uh, this kind of studies uh, was the uh, sur uh, ADT survival free, uh, ADT free survival, sorry. Uh, but then we realized that probably some cases uh, with uh, probably not just one positive focus, but uh, three, four or five uh, do really deserve uh, some kind of systemic, systemic treatment because probably they, those are the cases uh, uh, will develop uh, uh, a metastatic progression sooner or later. So we just discuss uh, case by, by case, uh, but I would say in a, in a purely experimental scenario. So I would, you know, I would, I would think we, we have to to make really clear this, this this case that you just discussed. This is oligometastatic, de novo oligometastatic, but with novel imaging. It's actually M zero in conventional imaging, and that's probably a very different um, group of patients than the oligometastatic disease in conventional imaging. And we probably shouldn't mix it up because a lot of the studies that have been done in oligometastatic disease, um, also retrospectively, obviously used, it conven used conventional imaging. So I think we, we are a bit on, on thin ice here um, to discuss that patient. So the ADT for me, um, if you have the radiotherapy, obviously the ADT for two, three years is anyway there. And uh, afterwards you can see um, what, what happens with the PSA. And, and again, the ADT plus another systemic treatments, all the, all the, the studies we have for the combinations are done in the, except Stampede that has also M0 patients, um, are done in, in conventional imaging metastatic patients. So, so I guess we need really new studies to, to find out what we have to do with these kind of patients who probably biologically are different, right? If you see the metastasis really only by the novel imaging. And uh, the metastasis directed therapy, as, as John Luca said, obviously, It, it's something that's a big hype, but if we are honest, the the evidence is 
really not very big. The Pete Ost study that is very nicely done on randomized and prospective is in oligorecurrent disease. So again, another setting than the novo metastatic disease. Um, so I think we really need studies. And again, we, we're waiting for Stampede to open up. Thank you, Silke. So that, that was my last question. So you see that if you use PSMA PET CT uh, as a staging tool in high risk prostate cancer patient, you will improve the accuracy of, uh, of, your, of your staging, but there's no proof to date that you will uh, improve the outcomes, the clinical outcomes of your patients. And it raised a lot of questions uh, regarding the primary tumor and the metastasis uh, treatment. So a lot of studies are uh, awaited uh, to answer all these questions. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Guillaume, for this interesting clinical case discussion. So the PROP-PSMA trial, as you correctly said, has generated a lot of debate worldwide. And uh, I think that uh, all the experts agree that uh, at this point, the evidence is not sufficient for the next generation imaging to replace, to replace the conventional modalities for the upfront staging of iris prostate cancer. We will see how the main scientific society will react to this study. Uh, probably reading the next update of their guidelines. So thank you again. <laughs>